This is the Halting Winter Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Winterhalter. Halting Winter exists to help business owners get more alignment on the major parts of their company, the six parts of their company, so that you can make more profit and enjoy work again. We want we want your business to thrive, but we want you to enjoy uh, the, the business that you started. I remember when you started your business and it was fun. It was fun to go to work, even though there was stress, even though right there were obstacles to overcome. Uh, we want you to have fun again at work, but we want you to do that and making more money so that you can invest that into your work and into your life, enjoy in life. Today on the podcast, we are talking about masterminds. One of the things that we've been behind the scenes building over the last uh, handful of months is our mastermind programs. Really believe, I really believe in the power of masterminds. I have been a part of and have led masterminds uh, for the last 10 plus years, uh, um, 20 plus years in, in in various roles, either in business or in the nonprofits I've led and ran. And I, I've always been highly encouraged by them. In fact, I, I kind of made a transition um, probably eight, eight years ago, I think it was, where I started spending, uh, you know, I went to conferences, you know, with kind of my um, educational and or whatever that conference budget uh, that I had in the various roles of, in organizations I either worked for or led, um, I would have that that budget line item, and I would go to typically right. You go to big conferences, and you learn and you try to network and meet people. And I had a shift probably eight years ago where I kind of said, you know what, the big conferences just aren't doing anything for me. Uh, I, I did an assessment and just realized after I had been to some smaller ones, I had been to some more, I would say, a seminar type where it was really, you know, there, there's uh, less than 100 people in the room. Um, you're at tables. You, they're very uh, like workshop based, like you're accomplishing something. You're not just listening to someone speak the entire time or a bunch of speakers. Uh, you're there for an intentional purpose. So I went to a, a speaking one. I went to a course development one. I went to, I've been to preaching ones and teaching ones and all kinds of different ones looking at kind of how to, how to get better at my craft. And, uh, those have just, they just were so like, it was just so obvious the better results, the better, um, rewards from the smaller ones and the bigger ones. And the big ones usually cost, right? By the time you added airfare and hotel and car and the conference tickets and food and expenditure, I was spending way more uh, getting far less out of the ones that uh, the, the seminar workshop ones. And then when I when I started to be a part of masterminds and started to lead masterminds, then I really saw, okay, this is the ticket. This is the thing now that because it's ongoing, it wasn't, you know, you go to a workshop and then you go home and have to figure out how to apply that. It was a workshop, you know, the the monthly mastermind meeting was kind of the workshop. And then you had ongoing relationships, uh, connections with those people to help as you implemented that insight and that information to your specific uh, situation. And so, man, it just is so helpful. And so that's what we're doing today is we're kind of talking, I want to, I want to talk about why masterminds are so helpful but also tell you about two that we're launching. So just why masterminds are helpful, just a few things that they do to help you think through like, would this be beneficial for me? Number one, <coughs> excuse me, still fighting this cough. Number one, a mastermind uh, helps you uh, have a place where you get to share wins and share obstacles. One of the things I think we don't do enough as business owners, as executives, is celebrate the wins. We may do that for our team as kind of an effort to help motivate and inspire, but are you doing it for yourself? Are you celebrating the wins and achievements? Uh, or, at least how I kind of operate, it was just so easy to win, to accomplish, and then move right on to the next thing. And sometimes it was just so powerful to look back and go, Man, what have I actually done? Like, what have I, what have I been a part of? What have I, what have I accomplished? And not just to pat yourself on the back, but to really learn, and to be encouraged to go. Man, I'm having an impact. Number one, number two, to say, man, how can I replicate some of that? Was there, were, were there things 
uh, I know I have a habit because I just, I, I want to have a disposition that's humble. I don't want to be braggadocious. I don't, right. There's a difference between confidence and cocky. And I, I just, something about people that are cocky and people that are, uh, seem to always talk about their achievements seems to grate me the wrong way. Um, because their life seems to be about them. And may, I don't know where that comes from in me. I was just maybe cause I was, I was raised by a pretty humble people. And, and so it's just always been a part of me to, to be humble, but I think there's a problem in that, right? Every, every strength has a weakness and this, the strength of humility is that you maintain grounded and I think hungry to continue, right? You, you don't rest on your achievements and you don't, uh, you're not looking for pats on the back to help motivate you to, to, to move forward. You, you just want to be impactful and effective, but you also then I think don't celebrate and you don't, you're kind of nervous about appreciation or applause or thankfulness. And even though you crave, and that's the problem, you crave it. We all crave it, but then like you kind of feel guilty about it and, and you shouldn't do that. either. That might tell you in an unhealthy place with your humility. Uh, you need to be able to share your wins. That's the beauty of a mastermind is that's how I start every mastermind. It's just what were some wins for the week? It helps you look no matter how frustrating the week was, no matter what big obstacle is in your way, you probably had some wins. Uh, there were some wins. There's something you can find to say, man, that was a good thing. That, that that was a win for the week. And so it helps you be thankful. It helps you be grateful. It helps you have an environment where you're hearing other things that people are doing and just gets you excited for life. I think that's why you might be in your business and not be having fun. It might not be enjoyable anymore. It's because you're just not looking at the things that are enjoyable. You, the things that are hard, the things that are frustrating are so front of mind that you need an exercise like sharing your wins, but also being able to share your obstacles, being able to share the hardships and share that in a community of people that have some understanding. Uh, that's why right, when you put business owners together, uh, they, they get it. <laughs> you, 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 you're rowing in the same waters. And yes, there's some differences, you know, a business that's that's got a revenue of a million a year versus a, a business that has a revenue of a hundred million a year has, those are some different types of waters, some different types of, 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 of realities. Um, and yet there are so also some similarities. And, and so uh, again, we would put, we, we, we put business owners, that's one of the re, the ways we kind of help put you in the same waters as we figure out what your, what your annual revenue is and, and try to align you so that the waters are kind of the same. But, sharing those obstacles. Now here's a win or here's the big win about a mastermind. When you're sharing obstacles, you can get instant feedback, instant feedback to be like ground you to reality, to, to, to make sure you're not like making an obstacle bigger than it is. Uh, but you also get feedback and maybe how to move through that, how to, how to get over that hurdle, uh, how, how to break through that. You get new ideas and insights that you would have never come to yourself. You doing life alone is the slow way. It's also the way that has the most failure because the only way to learn is to experience failure. And that failure just may be, man, just pounding you against the rocks. And let me tell you, you're going to have to go through that. That's why me, for over this last year, I have spent a lot of money, at least for me. I have spent in, uh, large amounts of money to be a part of masterminds, groups, uh, coaching that has helped me learn from their failures. So I didn't have to learn it. Now I've still had to learn via a lot of failure. I've had a lot of, again, failure this last year is more like trying things and just having to learn to stick with it, right? Sales. You're going to have, if you're, if you sell anything, you're going to have a lot of failure continually. Just the reality of sales. People say no, things have to be right. You have to, you have to work through things. Uh, work through false beliefs, limiting beliefs, work through fears uh, to sell something. If you're a small business owner, you know this. There's fa there's failure. There's failure with products. There's failure with programs. There's failure with services. And you have to learn. But man, to be able to learn from others that have already faced the same, to be able to learn um, tools and resources that have failed and ones that have succeeded, uh, like it, being a part of a group, just it puts you so far ahead of where you'd be by yourself. And, and so you get collaboration, you get to improve and develop faster, and you're going to get better results. So I just want to encourage you, think about a mastermind. If you are a business owner or you are a, a nonprofit director, you know, I was a pastor for 20 years 
And, and so I just have a heart uh, for, for uh, pastors specifically, but for people also directing, you know, I directed a, I had a nonprofit. I, I, I founded, um, the Capitol Philharmonic Orchestra. I was a orchestra choral conductor, and I founded that organization uh, with great success over our five year run together. And I founded a school of the arts um, for people taking all kinds of classes from music classes to actual art, drawing and sculpting classes and all kinds of things. And so I, I've, I, I know what it is. Like there's something unique about nonprofits where A, you're not selling. A, a, a product you're 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 still selling though you're selling a service you're selling transformation you're selling you're still selling something and, and but you have donors you have members right if you're a church you're still selling something and that makes you feel like I think that's the hard thing with nonprofits is selling makes you feel dirty it makes you feel like uh and so a lot of nonprofit directors or pastors over churches really have a hard time uh, getting the again they're not business but the organizational components uh, of their of their nonprofit they have a hard time with those elements and so that's where I, I, these masterminds are here to come alongside and help you they're here to take if you're a nonprofit a director uh, they're here to help you with the things that you're probably not uh, good at and, and the things that you sometimes make you feel like ick like uh, how do I do this well? Um, we want to help you. Um, if you're a business owner, it's not that ick. You may you just a lot of business owners go into business with one real skill. I'm working with a, a a guy who runs an audio engineering company, and so he does audio for concerts, but he also does audio for big events, right? Corporate events. If if you know Microsoft in our area is going to do a big corporate event or you know, even for inside, internal, or for external, whatever they're doing, they'll rent out a huge ballroom, or they'll rent out a, to Microsoft, they'll rent out the huge theater, you, you know, and uh, and they need audio for it, and so he uh, he's doing that, but he came in, like, he, he started as an audio engineer, the guy's a, a wizard when it comes to audio engineering, but he launched a business. Guess what doesn't help you run a business? Audio engineering, knowing how to run a soundboard, does not help you at all when it comes to understanding marketing, understanding sales, understanding uh, your cash flow, understanding operations and overhead, like <laughs> all of those tools and skills and, and, and right. People look at it's like magician wizardry on a soundboard, on a sound mixer. Now, now it does nothing <laughs> to help you make your back, the back end of your business thrive. And so you might be in the same place where you're a business owner. You, you, you came in loving a specific product or a specific aspect of business, but now you're like, you're overwhelmed because because it's it's the other aspects that just are are killing you. They're the obstacles. They're the headaches. And so that's what we do with these masterminds. A, we come. Halting Winter has a framework that we use to take those six primary parts of either your nonprofit or your business. And, and help you streamline those, put those things working together so that your business rows in a, in a similar, in the same direction. You're, all the components of your business are rowing in the same direction. And, and also, not only does it give you the framework to use so that your nonprofit or your business actually runs well, it gives you those people, those people who are in similar spaces, uh, business owners rowing in the same waters, directors, pastors, uh, people leading nonprofits who, who are facing similar obstacles, who have similar stresses and frustrations. And it's helping you go, man, uh, how, how can we how can we encourage each other? How can we celebrate the wins and be mindful of the wins? But how when we have obstacles, how can we how can we put those on the table and get instant feedback, instant uh, ideas and creativity? that not only would it have been hard for you to get to because it's hard to be creative when you're in a spot of stress. Number two, it's you can only be as creative as your brain works, right? And you only have so much knowledge and so much experience. And when you add others to the table, you go from addition, right? When it's just you, you add by right education, you add by experience. When you add others to the table that have <coughs> excuse me, 
that have additioned, you now have multiplication. You are now multiplying your your pool of creativity, your pool of insight. And so, man, masterminds, I just want to encourage you, this may be the ticket to help you. And so if you're interested in our masterminds, you can go to haltingwinter.com backslash masterminds, haltingwinter.com backslash masterminds. And you can, um, you can click on the box that applies either pastors, the pastor's mastermind or the business owner's mastermind. And we're, we're, our plan is to start those here in, in this next month and, and continue those to keep those going. And so if you are interested in being a part, go to those uh, right away and, and secure your spot. We would love to help uh, be a part of your journey to help you um, take off that stress, take off that overwhelm, and help you just enjoy uh, leading again. Enjoy you as a business owner, as a director, as a pastor, leading your ministry, leading your company, and really seeing 2023 as a year of success for you. And success, I believe, is I want you to enjoy your work. And you'll enjoy your work when, A, when your finances are in the black and looking good, and when you actually see uh, um, momentum, when you're accomplishing a mission. And so if we can help be a part of that, that would be our joy. Again, go to haltingwinter.com backslash masterminds and check it out. Until next time.